And we are back with Dr. Alicia Beal, family medicine provider at Novant Health Salem Family Medicine in Winston-Salem. We're talking about sleep habits, we're talking about daylight saving time, and of course you're gonna be putting your clock back an hour on Saturday night. Yes, it is this weekend already. All right, so this question that we have from a viewer is, um, what do the sad lamps really work? They can help, yes. Uh, they usually, if they're gonna be effective, and most people it's within one to four hours, I'm, not, I'm sorry, one to four weeks, you'll start seeing a benefit in t with light therapy. There's also dawn simulators for people who are having trouble uh, with, who don't wanna have the bright light on them all the time. And that starts about 30 minutes to 90 minutes, lower level increasing in light. So they kind of mimic the sun coming up earlier at the, at the start of their day. Okay, um, we've had someone who worked, you know, evening and night shifts for years as a nurse and they have trouble kind of resetting, getting back to a more normal pattern. So what can we do to get back to a more normal pattern? That is difficult when you're used to a certain way of sleeping. Um, again, I kind of go back to you, you can always control the time you wake up. So set your, you, if you set what you know, what you want your bedtime to be and what time you want you be, your get up time. Stay true to your get up time. Uh, and then when you get up, don't nap during the day. If you have to have at least one nap, no more than 20 minutes. Otherwise it'll start impacting your ability to consolidate your sleep at nighttime. If you're still struggling with your bedtime, then I'll say whatever time you normally fall asleep at, start backing it up by about 15 minutes every few days until you get to that time that you want to go to sleep. And again, don't nap during the day. Mm -hmm. what, it, what Let's talk about that since you said about like the certain amount of hours that we need to sleep. What, let's talk about the sleep hours that people need depending on their age group. Uh, it increases, it's, it's more increased when you're a, a newborn. Like when you're a newborn, you're sleeping 14 to 17 hours and then progressively declines. By the time um, you're a toddler, you're getting more like about, uh, I actually wrote this, wrote this down, 11 to 14 hours, make sure I get this right. And for preschool, it's 10 to 13 hours. School age, 9 to 11. Teenagers really need to be getting 8 to 10 hours of sleep a night, which a lot of times we see a lot of our teens are sleep deprived. Uh, adults, 7 to 8 hours, sometimes 9 hours. But 7 to 8 is that golden thing for adults because if it's less than that or greater than that, you're actually going to start having some issues with sleep deprivation perhaps if you're getting less than seven hours and it affects your memory a lot of research is coming out that your sleep is very important to prevent preventing dementia exercise your diet and your sleep so you had mentioned exercise before talking about you know if you can't exercise in the afternoon what about if you're a morning exercise person I think anytime you can get exercise in, it's a good thing. So if you can only exercise in the morning, exercise in the morning. But if you're having trouble with your sleep, still try to get out for about 20 minutes in the afternoon so that you're, you are exposed to the intensity of the light from the sun because the sun is much more intense than anything you can create in your own home. And if you're not being exposed to the sunlight, your body will actually down modulate to where they think the indoor, the body thinks the indoor light is the sunlight and then it'll be activating in the evening instead of helping you to see, oh, the light is dimmer, it's time to go to sleep. All right, uh, what happens, there's a lot of times where, you know, we're at home and I'm like, huh, I can't even make it until like 9.30. Should I force myself to stay up till like 10 o'clock? Um, knowing that that's when I normally go to sleep and I wake up at the same time, or if you're tired, just go to bed. That's a good question. I think if you have a sleep deficit, you have not gotten enough sleep. I think it's reasonable to go to bed. If your body's tired, go to bed. But really what we're talking about is habitual sleep. You really, you don't want to deprive yourself of sleep for days on end and then try to catch up all at once. You do so much better if you just aim for that seven to eight hours of sleep. Americans are really bad about self-imposed sleep restriction. And we don't want to do that. Like I said, you know, it impacts the expression of 700 genes. It impacts your appetite. It impacts your memory consolidation. That last seven to eight hours of sleep, uh, that last hour and a half to two hours of that time frame is when we're dealing with our fears and our anxieties. It's, uh, and if you are deprived of that, then often you are misreading social cues, you're more irritable, and, um, you, and you actually have an increase or heightened sense of anxiety. It's really important. It's much more important than people think. They think of sleep as being an interruption to productivity, but really sleep helps you become more productive. Mm, that's a great way to look at it. Thank you so much. We so appreciate it. Thank you for your time, your expertise, and everybody needs to get a much better night's sleep. If you missed any of this conversation, it's going to be in the two wants to know section of our website.